What's up everyone, Willie Apple here. Yes, I'm back in the house. I know Mac OS 27 is still a ways off, but why don't we go over what we know about it? Because we actually know quite a bit already about what's coming inside of Mac OS 27. So stay buckled up, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we know for sure that's happening with Mac OS 27 is that it is completely killing off Intel. That means the oldest device that will support it is the M1 MacBook Air. Kind of crazy because this is the first MacBook that has been personally mine. And guess what? Apple had to optimize for Apple Silicon. Guess what that did to Intel? It slowed it down a bit because they had to write both for Apple Silicon and Intel. Guess what Apple did when they killed off PowerPC's move over to Intel? They killed PowerPC. And what did that do? It boosted performance. That seems to be Apple's main focus this year is performance. There are a couple of other main factors that Apple's gonna be working on, but performance is the main one. Now we also need to take a look at some hardware leaks. Apple is still on track to releasing a touchscreen MacBook, which yes, a lot of people don't like the idea of touchscreens on a MacBook, but personally I think it makes a lot of sense. iOS and macOS currently have a unified design language called Liquid Glass. Apple's gonna be continually optimize it to make it more touch friendly. Now Apple did do a couple of changes like liquid glass a little bit smaller and throughout the betas, but I have a feeling like that will be coming back. Now maybe only if you use touchscreen mode, but I could see it coming almost 100%. I also expect Apple to maybe tone down liquid glass a bit because a lot of people just don't like it. And to be honest, it's kind of like an impractical thing. It kind of was like, oh, we need to distract them from the whole AI thing. And speaking of AI, Apple's going to be doing some AI stuff this year. That's going to be the main focus, AI. So currently, there's a project internally at Apple called Project Mulberry. Project Mulberry is related to the Health app, and it is supposedly going to be an AI agent for health. Does that mean we're going to be getting the Health app on the Mac? We'll have to wait and see about that. But personally, if Apple's going to be releasing a new subscription, I could see them maybe replacing Apple Fitness with Apple Health Plus and maybe like tying them in together. And it's just gonna be one big AI agent inside of the health app. Now, Apple is currently way behind in the mobile AI race. There's currently Galaxy AI and there's also Gemini on the Pixels. Apple is currently way behind on that. But guess what Apple is doing? Just like with Samsung and just like with Gemini, they're using Gemini. So basically the entire mobile industry is gonna be using Gemini for their AI features. Now I do expect to see the first implementation with macOS 26.4. And with macOS 26.4, it's basically gonna be a, the more personal Siri that was expected last year, but we never got. Mainly because Apple intelligence is not that good right now. Apple's large language model, is very compact, they have limited resources. So while on-device AI is good for stuff like Willy Study, making study sets on your device, doing stuff like comparing it to ChatGPT is not good enough yet because ChatGPT has all these servers somewhere across the country. So Apple using Gemini is probably the best case scenario thing that could happen. It seems like we're not gonna be getting the app intense feature that was expected with the more personal Siri. Looks like it's just gonna be just Siri and that's it. Apple's gonna be focusing on one thing at a time from what the rumors are saying. But macOS 27 is expected to let more third-party app developers use the more personal Siri. It's basically gonna tap into Gemini. So you could just go directly into Siri and ask it a question, basically inside the app, like, like I have an example right here on the screen, create a new widget theme, and they will just create a new widget theme for me. I don't get the point of that, but that's gonna be something that's currently expected. But that's something that we are still waiting on that we will probably finally get inside of iOS 27. Now, something I expect Apple to have emphasis on on WWDC is the game porting toolkit. And that is expected to bring Windows games over to Mac. Now, it's not gonna be like Proton that you see on the Steam Deck, for example. It's just gonna be an opportunity for Windows developers to bring their game over to Mac, like evaluate it, and then optimize it just like that, fine tune everything. It's not gonna be like you drop the game in, it just brings it over to Mac. It's a little bit different than that. Now, what will the name of Mac OS 27 be? We got a couple of options here. First option is Apple does not use a name at all, which is highly unlikely because if they were to not use a name at all, they would have done with Mac OS Tahoe. Let's go over the names that are not probably gonna happen. Mac OS Tiburon and Mac OS Condor. Mac OS Tiburon is a rich city inside of California and I just do not see Apple doing it at all. Mac OS Condor, on the other hand, is basically just an animal. So if Apple were to just go back to using animals, that's what they would be using. Now here are the most likely scenarios. 
macOS Mammoth, macOS Redwood, and macOS Pacific. Now we currently are on macOS Tahoe, which is a water themed OS. And if I were to bet my money, I'm gonna guess macOS Pacific. Because just like with macOS Monterey, it's gonna fade into Big Sur. And it's just gonna be Big Sur Pro, basically, if you know what I mean. A more refined version of Big Sur. That's why I could see with macOS 27 this year. macOS Pacific, it goes from water, goes into the ocean and that's basically what it is. Now I know Pacific and Tahoe are on different sides of California, but I still think it makes sense. It goes to a water transition. It's still gonna be a water themed OS. Just like Snow Leopard was a variant of Leopard. And as you know, this Big Sur is in the county of Monterey. Now this does not mean that Mac OS 27 won't get any features at all. There are actually some hidden features inside of Mac OS Snow Leopard, believe it or not. Now Apple actually has a couple of patents here that I'm looking at right now. And it looks like we're gonna be getting something like gaze detection inside of it. That lines with the new Siri inside of macOS 26.4. And this is basically going to be a hands-free version. Let's say you don't have any hands. It's just going to be making the Mac and iPhone pretty easy to use. This will basically allow people to use their full eyes and, and voice to control the entire operating system. Basically letting you use Vision Pro hand gestures, for example. And let's say you just don't have arms at all. You'll be able to fully use iOS. You'll be able to fully use macOS. Although I think you can, it'll just be a little bit easier, I think. I also see that Apple is going to be training data with users data. Now this will be a little bit interesting considering Apple's stance on privacy, but it's basically going to be used for their health plus feature. I don't know. This is kind of, this might be a little bit controversial but I don't know what this is about. Hopefully this doesn't come, hopefully Apple figures out privacy on like Microsoft. But yeah, macOS 27 is expected to be kind of a gap year between macOS 26 and macOS 28. macOS 27 is expected to come out this June at WWDC for beta testing and public beta testers will get their hands on it in July and then it will release inside of September. Anyways, thanks for watching. Come on, and subscribe, download my apps in the description down below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.